Well, hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Stu Harrison. Today we're in front of one of our industry's more unique examples. This is a 2008 Steingraber Phoenix Edition 168 piano. And this is an ongoing collaboration where Steingraber basically produces the raw instrument uh, and then it goes off to a secondary company where a lot of these modifications are, are made and sort of sold as a uh, co-branded product. Uh, and what has made these rather uh, famous, if not infamous, depending on who you ask, is that they use an extensive amount of carbon fiber and other interesting technologies and approaches through the instrument to generate what is genuinely a very unique tone and playing uh, experience. I mean, we talk about unique pianos and you know unique tones, but really you're kind of playing within a fairly narrow band of difference from one instrument to another when you're up in the upper echelons of, of your traditional piano builders. When you get in front of a carbon fiber piano like this, uh, it is uh, a sizable shift away from that uh, kind of tonal center that we're all used to. And it gives you a completely different experience, both from a dynamic perspective as well as a character perspective. So first thing is I'm gonna give you a quick playing sample so you can get this sound in your ear. And I really hope that we're able to capture it well enough um, with the microphones so that you get the same kind of uh, experience at home as I am uh, here, at least certainly as close as we can. Uh, by the way, there are no effects being applied to any of this, and this is coming in through two Rode large diaphragm uh, microphones, just completely raw. That is so different uh, from what I would normally get from a piano of this size, even a stun grabber of this size. For one, the dynamic responsiveness is definitely exaggerated over what you get on a normal piano. So the leap from like a mezzo forte up to like a forte or a fortissimo um, is, a, is, is a much less even curve than what you would get sometimes on a, on a, a normal uh, spruce soundboard instrument. The sustain is like, whoa. As well, when you get right into the upper ranges of the dynamics of this instrument, you start to get a very different uh, kind of formant or a tonal shape to it. Rather than uh, kind of maintaining the same type of character uh, throughout the whole dynamic range, it actually shifts so that you start to get 
almost equal amounts of most of your upper partials happening in conjunction with uh, your fundamental as you approach that uh, triple fortissimo range. And compared to other instruments, we had a Bussendorfer we compared this to, we had a Steinway and we had a Beckstein. Um, and this by far had the most prominent fundamental compared to the first, second, or third partial. Which makes sense because so much of this instrument is geared towards creating tone the most efficiently as possible. Now in addition to the carbon fiber soundboard, there's also a very different bridging system. You've got uh, a completely different style of hitch pin in the back which raises the string so you're basically eliminating the down bearing and, the, and you've got the string passing through a mechanism on the bridge which essentially squeezes uh, the string down onto the bridge surface uh, over it without the need for significant levels of down bearing. So that in conjunction with the carbon fiber soundboard is what's giving us this sustain length. Now the length of string behind the bridge uh, is left free to ring, so it is a type of duplex, I suppose. It's not a tuned duplex scale, uh, but it is quite active. There's also a front duplex in the top two sections uh, of the frame, the top one being far more active. And you can hear it here, versus. Now in the rear duplex, it's almost the inverse of that. You still have some uh, resonance uh, potential in your top section here but the lower one is a lot more active. Now I also notice a few things about the lower register on this instrument. You get that same relationship between the fundamental and your upper partials, even in your lower octaves. Uh, and so the clarity in the bass is pretty high, uh, especially given the size of this instrument. Yeah, you're getting really distinct presentations of all of those notes uh, just with that lower stacked C triad. And then in the middle of the piano and at normal mid-range dynamics, the character of the piano doesn't feel dramatically different than a normal instrument. And then in addition to all of those uh, kind of tonal portions of the instrument, you've also got a soft pedal which is pretty unique. And it manages to combine the function of what would normally be the third and the fourth pedal if you had a grand piano with a fourth pedal. Um, the third pedal on a grand piano of course is the una quarter. it shifts the entire action over so that the hammer is not fully striking all three strings if we're talking about the tri-chords. If there's a fourth pedal uh, present, that normally uh, would lift the hammer so that you're reducing the blow distance. Well, this pedal manages to do both. So if you press it over a, the normal amount, you get the, the shift, but then if you keep pressing down, it actually raises the hammer height. And so for my first time ever behind a carbon fiber soundboard, I'd have to say that it did not disappoint. Anyway, I'd be really interested to hear about other people's experiences either with a carbon fiber soundboard or some of these um, you know, metal uh, bridging systems uh, that we're seeing here. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us for the video. Hope you've enjoyed this look at a very unique instrument uh, within our industry. If it's your first time, please consider subscribing because we'd love to have you back. And for those who are returning, thank you so much. Great to see you here as always. My name is Stu Harrison. Take care and we'll see you soon.